Hello again everyone. Yesterday we started our bird watching sessions and today we're going to carry on. Yesterday we learned that God made all of the birds. In fact, God made everything, but he made the birds on day five. Can you remember? And we also learned that the Bible tells us it's a good thing to look at God's creation and consider his handiwork and especially the birds. Lots of references to birds in the Bible. I wonder if you've seen any birds yet. Did you make a bird feeder? Maybe you're going to do that today. My bird feeder's out there, but I think the birds are weighing it up. Nobody's tried to have a peck yet. But I have seen some birds. I've seen lots of sparrows. I've seen um, a blue tit, just one. I've seen a blackbird. And I saw a wood pigeon yesterday. And of course, down here, you probably have seen, if you've looked for some birds, you'll have seen a robin. I saw one in my garden and I saw one when I took the dog for a walk into the woods. And also yesterday, I was driving home along Schneider Road and I saw a massive flock of starlings, I think they were, and they were making beautiful patterns in the sky. I don't know whether you've ever seen that, but you should watch out for that. It's amazing. It's called murmuration i think and it's amazing they all fly together and they make beautiful patterns and they don't bang into each other absolutely amazing <laughs> and another thing that's amazing today's bird fact is all about migration and we're going to watch a little video shortly about migration but if you remember, just at the beginning of this video, there was a picture of a different bird. Yesterday's bird was a seagull. Today's bird was a swallow. And the noise, the call that you could hear, was the call of the swallow. Now watch this little video from the RSPB, all about migration, and hear about the amazing journey of the tiny swallow. Tommy is particularly exciting. Lots of our migrant birds are heading back. Birds like the sand martins, warblers like chiff chaffs, willow warblers, black caps. All these birds have spent the winter down in Africa where it's nice and warm and there's an abundance of insect food. Birds like the swallow that people have been enjoying today, they nest here on the reserve. Swallow probably weighs mo no more than 20 grams of feather, skin and bone, yet it's made the journey back from Africa across the Sahara Desert. All the birds have arrived back over the past two weeks. Again, on a day like today, masses of insect food. So they're back from this incredible journey. They're feeding up, catching tiny insects, really very small insects. Need to catch hundreds of them in a day to just get through the evening. So when you're out in your garden or in your local park and you're enjoying these birds, just spare a moment to think how far they've traveled and where they were a few months ago. What an incredible journey. Isn't that incredible? All those little birds and big birds traveling miles and miles and miles over mountains and deserts and seas. It is an incredible feat. But how do the birds know when is the right time to fly? because it always happens at the same time every year. So how do they know that? Well, scientists tell us and the Bible tells us that the birds know by the senses, they sense changes around them. So they sense the changes in temperature and the changes in the amount of daylight and also changes in the food that's around as well. And that tells them when is exactly the right time for them to fly. For them to migrate and also it tells them which direction they've got to fly absolutely amazing would it surprise you to know that the bible also talks about the birds migration in the old testament there was a prophet called jeremiah and he was talking to um a the people who had turned away from god god's own people and they turned away and they'd stopped following him they were ignoring god they didn't think it was very important and Jeremiah said this to them, Storks, doves, swallows and thrushes all know when it's time to fly away for the winter and when to come back. But you, my people, don't know what the Lord wants you to do. Wow. Well, what does that mean? Well, 
I think it means that if we want to be wise like the birds, we need to do the right thing at the right time. Birds need to migrate because they need to get to warmer climates where there's plenty of food so that they can lay their egg, build their nest, lay their eggs and raise their young. And then when it gets cold in that place, they move back to somewhere warmer. So that's the way that they can survive, isn't it? Well, the Bible says the same is for us. We need to do the right thing at the right time. And does the Bible tell us what the right thing is? It certainly does. And it even tells us the right time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what is salvation? Well, I'm going to leave you today with this little video from Pursue God Kids. It's a group of kids that are going to explain to you what salvation is all about. But don't forget, if we're going to be wise like the birds, we need to do it now. See you tomorrow. Hey kids, have you ever gotten in a fight with your parents? Maybe they told you that you couldn't go to your friend's house. So you got in a big argument with them. When you were fighting with them, did you feel like you weren't close to them anymore? Probably, but you made up and things felt right again. Well, that's kind of similar about what we're talking about today, salvation. So, what is salvation? Salvation is a fancy word for getting right with God. But wait, who said anything was wrong? Well, do you remember that thing called sin? Sin is doing bad things that hurt us and others. It's the opposite of what God wants, and it separates us from Him. And every person has a sin problem, so that's why we need to get right with God. So, how do we do it? We get saved when we believe in Jesus. It's that easy. Did you think you had to do something silly, like pay back for your sins, or jump through hoops? Nope. There's nothing you have to do to work for salvation. It's a free gift when we put our trust in Jesus. Salvation is simple for us, but it wasn't so simple for Jesus. Jesus paid to save us when he died on the cross. You've probably heard that before, but that's the most important thing that's ever happened. Someone had to live a perfect life without sin. And then had to die on the cross to pay for all other sin. And that someone was Jesus. And he was the only one who could do it, because he is God. So he died and was buried in a tomb. But three days later, he rose again. Jesus bought our salvation by giving up his life. Thanks, Jesus. Anyone can make a personal decision to be saved. Believing in Jesus isn't a decision your parents, grandparents, or kids' church teachers can make for you. Memory verse! We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. So kids, if you want to put your faith in Jesus, talk to a parent or teacher about it. They'll help you understand how to follow Jesus.